Today I will show you the positioning of our continents. It was one of the pieces of the puzzle that was missing. Consequently, I will be able to show you how the sun is moving across the continents. The only thing I have, of course, is the map of the moon. I showed you already in a previous video how I took our crater Sulpicius Gallus N and I made in Photoshop a 3D model of it. Half of the crater appeared to be an exact copy of the map of Antarctica. But people were saying, oh you are skewing and flipping horizontally, that's a fraud. Well, I have been working on my software skills in Blender, so now I can show you I am not skewing or flipping anything. So now we know half of the crater is Antarctica. But what about the other half? Let's put in the continents like they have been presented to us. But the problem of course is now we are in a hollow earth and half of the crater is ice. So let's take a look at the map that has been presented to us. Okay, that's correct, you could say, but we have two problems. First, the hollow earth problem and secondly, take a look at Antarctica. That is, of course, a wrong perspective. But luckily, we have a second clue. We have the map of Uncle Walt. As I showed in a previous video, the map of the Disney World is an exact copy of our crater. But where did Uncle Walt get this information? Well, Uncle Walt had made friends with a good Nazi, Werner von Braun. As you know, the Nazis were the first to see our crater from out of space. And they certainly would have been filming it all. Let's take the map of Uncle Walt and put the continents on it. Oh, you are skewing it and flipping it. Well, here is the proof. It's all about perspective, of course. Let's play the same trick on the Disney World map. And what you noticed, of course, is that the Americas are flipped vertically. Take a look from the Antarctica perspective. And in the center, of course, of Antarctica, you have the magnetic center. In the Disney World map, it is the place where the statue of Adolf, uh, I mean, Walt Disney is situated. There is a striking resemblance between Adolf Hitler and Walt Disney. I find this all very interesting. That is all food for conspiracy nutcrackers, of course. But let's return to the mother of all hoaxes, the discovery of the Americas. When you see the Templars cross, of course, you know what's happening. So it's not discovering the Americas, it is repositioning the Americas. Okay. That is all very nice, but how on earth could you fly around the world without noticing it? Let me show it to you with a 3D view. So you take a plane in Brussels and fly around the world. So 
so what have you been doing? You have been flying around the world in a Möbius ring. So this would be the real world map. And how do you fly around the world? Well, you turn the map. Very simple. Let's look for some additional evidence. Take the crater map, put in the continents and let's zoom in to prove I'm not skewing. Take a look at the plateaus. Put some water in it to make it more visible. And there you see the highest point in the mountains, which exactly matches the position of Mount Everest. Now, of course, you will say you have a problem, because if you flip vertically the Americas, you will have two North Poles and two South Poles, so that's impossible. Well, I got some news for you. We have two North Poles and we have two South Poles. The Magnetic and the Geographic Pole. What a strange coincidence. But why is that? Well, let us return to the little ball theory. If we were on a little ball, you would have one North Pole and one South Pole. But because it is a fraud and you cannot sail from Alaska to Siberia, they have to create two North and two South Poles. And then they come up with something like this and all the great scientists of course they believe it. Yes, it's true. Yeah, We have two North Poles and two South Poles. What a joke. So let's return to my model and let's flip it again vertically. But now you will say, hey, what about your North Pole and your South Pole? Well, I think it's not about poles, it's about lines. You have a North line and a South line. So for people who saw my previous video about the APEP energy, let's put the APEP energy on top of our crater and let's put it on top of the North and South lines. What is responsible for this movement? Well, I think the 30,000 Hadron Colliders are bending the energy. Let's take the two lines and put some Solomon stars on top of it. Let's take a look now at the world map of nuclear plants. Hmm, what a strange coincidence. Most of the nuclear plants seem to be located in the center of the Solomon star. Except if you turn it to the right, you end up in Japan. Maybe the Fukushima disaster had something to do with its location. At this point, I'm starting to have my doubts about the scientific explanation of splitting the atom. The word atom itself, atom, or the word uranium, ur ra om. I think they are using the old techniques.
look like nuclear cloud, this like gray smoke coming toward the building. Now that I know the position of the continents, I can start looking for the light, the sun. In a previous video, I showed you that we probably need two suns to create the time zones as we know them. So now there are two possibilities. One big circle with two suns or two small circles with one sun. But then I thought, well, the Solomon system, the Solomon star, has two suns, two moons and two zeros, sol o -mon. When I take this kind of Solomon star, it all seems to work perfectly. Let's try to animate this. Put the continents in the crater and with another lighting you can see that half the crater is Antarctica. Zoom in into the crater and let's insert the first sun. Coming in on the Americas, going out on Greenland, entering Africa. But now you will need a second sun, here it is. Now you can make a full circle with the two suns. Putting out the overall light. Now you can see it more clearly. But of course there are two Solomon overlays on the two continents. So I think these two Solomon stars together are creating the domes and the movement of light in it. And together they create a sort of pattern I think. Maybe Ezekiel's wheel? I don't know. Now let's take a look again at our crater. So this is the positioning of our continents. The main conclusion is that the Americas are flipped vertically. Now you will probably ask yourself, why on earth would you do something like this? Flip a continent, put people on a little blue ball, why would you hide the bigger earth? Let's say you want to get rid of a group of wild monkeys. You build a prison and you put them in there. Then you select the most psychopathic monkeys to rule this prison. You make him camp commanders. These monkeys would sell their own mother for their own personal gain. But still, these monkeys are causing a lot of problems. So, they have this brilliant idea. You hypnotize the monkeys into believing they are living on a little blue ball, flying in space. No reason to escape now. You tell them they can choose their own leaders. No reason to revolt now. And once in a while, when the prisons are getting overcrowded, a war is organized, or a virus is released, or some terrorists are attacking the population, all of this, of course, to keep people in fear and to prevent them from thinking, thinking and realizing they are not on a little blue ball. 